Hey guys, just got done designing my quilt here that I'm going to be using on the PCT and I'll be building this quilt pretty soon and hopefully making a little series of videos detailing how to build a quilt. But I figured while I was still kind of in the design process, I'd make a video on quilt design theory, I guess you might call it. What you want to do when you're designing a quilt, what to look for, and just little tips here and there. So this video is going to be about designing your quilt, laying it out, drawing it up, using a program maybe to draw it. And not necessarily the drawing part, but more what to design, what you want to design in your quilt. And so for my quilt here, I'm designing a Karo Step quilt, and it's going to be a ground quilt. The last quilt I made was actually more specifically for use in a hammock. And uh, this one I'm going to make a little bit bigger, a little bit wider, and it's going to be a lot better for ground use, and it's going to be the quilt that I take on the PCT, hopefully. So the first thing you want to do when you're designing a quilt is figure out the size, obviously. You can see here this one is 44 inches wide at the foot area, and it's got a little bit of a taper here, I'll go into that later. And then at the head area around your neck is 56 inches and the total length on this quilt is 76 inches and that that makes a quilt for me I'm maybe 5'10", 5'11", that makes a quilt that comes right up under my neck it completely encloses my feet and comes right up to my neck and hugs around me and that's pretty much how you want a quilt to fit you may want a little extra room if you like tucking your head under but ultimately a quilt is supposed to come up pretty much to under your chin and wrap around you right there. If your head gets cold, that's why you bring a hat or some type of down hood along to keep your head warm. Not really like a sleeping bag where you want the quilt to wrap around the top of your head. A little bit different. So when you're thinking of the size of your quilt, you want to make sure A, it covers your feet, B, it comes up to your chin, doesn't leave a gap around your chest, which is one of the primary places you want to keep warm. You really want to keep your core warm. And you also want to make sure that it's wide enough for whatever your use is. And this is where knowing what your use for the quilt is going to be really comes in handy. And the reason for that is when you're making a quilt specifically for hammock use, you can actually go a little bit narrower, you can go a little bit shorter, and that's because you have this underquilt that comes up under you, and so really that's kind of surrounding your bottom half of your body. You really only need a quilt that kind of covers the top. It doesn't necessarily have to wrap around like a ground quilt does. So just keep that in mind. Keep your ultimate use in mind. If you want a purely hammock quilt, you can go a little bit lighter, a little bit narrower, and save a little weight there but if you're gonna be using that quilt on the ground you're gonna actually need a little more width on the quilt so that you can tuck it around you keep it under you and keep any air out and you may want a little more length just in case you want to tuck your head up underneath it or just in case so keep your use in mind something else to consider is whether or not you're a side or a back sleeper or I guess that would be whether you're a side or a back sleeper and including whether or not you toss and turn a lot in the night. If you are a back sleeper, you can get away with a little bit of a narrower quilt. I would say, I, and these are just my estimations, maybe a 48 inch quilt would be a good number. If you're a side sleeper, you want to go a little bit wider. That's why I sleep on my slot, uh, I sleep on my side quite often. So I'm going with a 56 inch wide quilt because that is going to allow me to have the extra material and still be warm when I'm on my side. Because if you think when you're laying flat on your back, the quilt really only has to go around your legs, around your waist, and around your shoulders. When you are on your side, you have a little bit more material you need to kind of wrap around your waist and your hips. And so you're going to need a little bit wider of a quilt. If you toss and turn a lot, that means you should go a little bit wider than you would even for a side sleeping quilt just because you're moving a lot you're creating little gaps where the air can get in so you want to have some wiggle room so the air doesn't sneak in and take all your warmth away so that is what you want to look for with your size 
make sure it's wide enough, make sure it's long enough, make sure you take into consideration whether or not you need a wider quilt because you're sleeping on your side or not. And again, all of these numbers here are just what I'm using. If you're a smaller person or a bigger person, you're going to need to go smaller or wider. And one way you can do that is to lay down on the ground in your normal position, whether that be on your back or on your side, and take a cloth tape measure and kind of wrap it around and give yourself maybe three inches on each side extra just for wiggle room. And that should give you a good number to shoot for just to know how wide you need to go. Anyways, as far as your length goes, maybe just measure from the bottom of your feet up to under your chin and add a couple inches on, three or six inches, just to make sure you get that covered good. And one thing to remember, when you're building a down quilt, somehow things sometimes seem just to shrink for no reason. A lot of that is the loft of the down actually eats up a little bit of material. So that is another thing you should maybe account for when you design your quilt. Give a little extra room. Obviously you're going to have your seam allowances, which I have not drawn into this pattern yet. But you also should maybe add a couple inches here and there just for the room that you lose when the down lofts up. And some designs account for that completely by building in sidewalls into the quilt. I don't normally do that. I just kind of taper the quilt off on the side. So the next thing to consider, you've got your dimensions. Next thing you want to think about is tapering the quilt. Now, tapering the quilt can save weight. What I mean by taper is, you can see here, this line right here, that is a taper. This is the head part of the quilt that's wider, and then it tapers down to a narrower foot box on the quilt. And that will save you some room. Obviously, you can see you cut out these two areas of fabric and down, so that saves some weight. It does leave the quilt a little bit narrower around your hip area, which for side sleepers, you may not want to do that. And that's why I'm using a taper more like this one. This is sometimes called a half taper. This is actually much less than a half taper. Some people will taper the quilt from the halfway point. This one is maybe from about the quarter point. What I did was I measured up two feet, and then I tapered from there in six inches. So from here to here is six inches. And from here to here is two feet. And I basically just cut off that corner to save a tiny bit of weight. And the reasoning for doing that is obviously to save weight. But also, on your foot box, your feet do not require near as much width in a quilt as your head does. Or your shoulders more specifically and your hips. So you can afford to kind of cut off a little bit of material here just to save some weight. So those are the two types of tapers. You can have a full taper, and that's what I did in my last quilt, in my hammock quilt. And then you can have kind of a half or maybe a quarter taper where you taper off this bottom corner. And in my design here, you can see I've done maybe a quarter taper down here. So that's tapering. And remember, if you're a side sleeper, you may not want to do a full taper just because you might like to have that extra width right around your hips right around in here I think would be where your hips would be. So you may want to have a little extra width there, especially if you're sleeping on the ground. So that's tapering. The next thing you need to think about is your foot box. This area down here is where your feet are going to be tucked in. And if you think of a normal sleeping bag, you have material surrounding your feet completely. It keeps your feet nice and warm. Typically feet are something that get cold a little faster than other parts of the body. Just because they're farther away, they don't get as much blood flow, and they're not as, uh, they don't put off as much heat as the rest of your body does. So they tend to get a little cold. So the solution to that is a foot box. Now, your big decision is whether you want a temporary foot box, and that can consist of some, a channel down here for some rope where you pull it tight and it kind of cinches together into a circle. And then maybe you run some Velcro along these two edges here, and those can join up and form a pretty solid foot box with a cinched end. And on that end, you may need, it'll kind of have a little hole that you may need to plug up with some down or maybe stick a pair of socks in there just to keep the draft out. 
So that would be a temporary foot box. Some people don't even use a foot box. Some people use a flat quilt and just kind of tuck it under their feet. That can work. It works fine in a hammock, I've found. And then the other solution is a full-on sewn-in permanent foot, foot box. And that would be sewing these two edges together and somehow sewing the end of this quilt together, whether it be with a circle of fabric stuffed with down, or you can just kind of sew it flat together and allow the loft to fill in the seam spaces. I'm not going to go into too many details on how to do it, but that's just, those are your options pretty much. Leave it flat, put in a temporary foot box, or sew in a permanent foot box. On this quilt, I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and sew in a foot box. I did a temporary one on my hammock quilt, and I find that worked out well for most situations. But when I went to the ground, I found it was a lot nicer to have a sewn-in foot box. You didn't really have to fiddle with it, and you didn't have to worry about drafts coming in through the little cinch hole. So you've got your length, you've got your width, you've decided on a taper, you know what you're going to do with your foot box. The next step is probably the most important step, and that is baffling. Baffles refer to the little pieces of some type of fabric that run throughout the quilt that kind of keep the down in place. So if you think of this as the bottom layer of fabric on your quilt and this as the top layer, the down is going to obviously fill this space between, and you're going to need baffles of fabric going between the two layers to kind of keep the down where you want it. You want to keep the down positioned over your body so it doesn't kind of move out of the way and suddenly you lose all your insulation value. So that's what baffles do and there are quite a few ways to do baffles. This is a Karo step design. I'll get to that next after I do the more simple just kind of the standard. I'm not sure it really has a name. Horizontal baffling and this is like you would see in most typical quilts, most typical sleeping bags. They have these horizontal baffles that keep the down permanently in place. And this is a good option. This is kind of the classic way to make a quilt. One thing to think about is how far apart you want your baffling. And I don't really have any good numbers for you here. It's not too crucial. It can be... There's a lot of wiggle room in there. On this quilt, you can see I have seven inch baffles and you can go bigger than that. You can go smaller. If you go smaller, just keep in mind, you have to stuff each one of these baffles individually. And that's probably the hardest part is stuffing the down into the baffles because the down is so hard to work with. It goes everywhere. It's hard to get a good grasp and keep down from escaping. And you have to, if you do permanent baffles like this, you have to measure out the amount of down that needs to go in each baffle and then measure it out on scale and stuff it and then sew it up. So that's a lot of measuring. You can see here that's at least maybe 10 or 15 baffles that you would have to measure and stuff with down. Not fun, but it's, uh, it's one way to do it. I, however, am going to be doing a Karo Step quilt. The, if you were to draw up kind of the pros and cons of these two different styles, the pros is sewing in these horizontal baffles is much easier than doing a Karo step. You can see the red lines here, I should have pointed that out before. The red lines here are the baffles, and the red lines here are the baffles. There's a lot of other black grid lines that you don't need to really know. But this is what kind of a Karo step box looks like. So with the horizontal baffles, you it's much easier to sew in. You don't have to lift the needle and switch to a new position very often. You just kind of sew straight through. And the Karo step, on the other hand, requires all of these different little squares to be sewn in, all of these red lines. You have to sew that, lift the needle, sew that, lift the needle, sew that. So that's a lot of work. But with that said, a Karo step quilt can be stuffed with down. You can basically just put all of your down in, sew it up, and then redistribute the down throughout all of these channels without ever having to measure and weight out the down. And the reason you can do that is because none of these channels, none of these squares are completely joined together. 
the down can travel throughout the entire quilt through all of these little spaces here and so you can put all your down in at once and sew it up redistribute it maybe throw it in the dryer with some tennis balls to help uh, distribute the down and you'll be done whereas with this quilt you have to measure each little measure the area of each little baffle area and stuff it with a per and put that with a precise amount of down and measure the down out weigh the down grab the down put it in it's quite the process and it could be pretty tedious but so can sewing all of these little carol step baffles so that's your call I like the carol step because I do not prefer to stuff down so that is the baffling the next step in baffling is deciding how thick you want to go with your baffles and that really that's what ultimately determines how warm your quilt is I'm not going to go into specifics here you can look that up online but pretty much the thicker the quilt the warmer it's going to be I'm going to be using about three inches of loft and your baffle height pretty much determines what your loft is your loft kind of exceeds your baffles assuming that you overstuff your quilt and uh, so it, you can be a little bit warmer than what your baffles might might dictate but that's ultimately where your warmth comes from and that's how thick your baffles are one thing I should mention is some people actually do sewn through baffles they don't have any material joining the two layers the two shells of your quilt they just sew the two quilt layers together and that's okay for warm weather quilts maybe down to 60 possibly down to 45 degrees I'm not entirely sure but beyond that you start to get wind coming in through your or just cold air really coming in through your seams and because there's no baffle there to loft the down up it just goes right under into your quilt and gets you cold so sewn through is not really a great option unless you're doing a really warm weather quilt something else to think of in your baffles is the spacing so on this quilt the simpler design these are seven inch spaced baffles so each of these little rows is seven inches to the next row so that's pretty simple you can go bigger to save time you can go smaller I'm not sure why you would do that but on a caro step it gets a little more complicated as you can see here each of these rows well let me just start with this square the highlighted square here each square is 14 by 14 inches then in the center of that square is a six inch long baffle that does not extend all the way to the corner of that square so what you have is you form a square with these six inch baffles but the corners are kind of cut out and that's what allows the down to travel one of the other benefits of a carol step quilt is that you can redistribute the down on the fly so if you're out in the field and you notice hey my feet are getting kind of cold you can take some of the down that's puffed up up in this top part of the quilt and you can kind of push it down through these open areas down to your feet and get a little more warmth there so that's another benefit of the carol step quilt so I hope I made that clear it's carol step is a little bit hard to comprehend at first if you have any more questions just let me know I'll try to answer them but basically you form a grid and from the midpoint on that grid you extend your baffle length to form these squares and then you just make that pattern full of squares encompass the whole quilt here on my quilt I'm doing 14 inch squares with six inches of baffling in the middle uh, a common design is 12 inch squares with six inches and that's what I did on my old quilt and I think it works so well I think I can go bigger and save a little time and it'll just work just as fine so that's baffling the final step to think about on your quilt is customization what do you want to add onto your quilt to make sure that it suits your needs things to think about are a cinch like a little channel with rope up top around your neck where you can cinch it down just to make sure there's no draft 
some people and what I'm going to do is put a button snap one on each side here so you kind of wrap this or you wrap this around your neck button it behind you and then cinch it down and that keeps any air from getting in through your neck area and also you kind of want to throw in some hanging points maybe around the foot box and around the top edges and that will be just like a loop of fabric where you can kind of hang up the quilt to dry and maybe tie some rope and hang it from a tree limb to dry it out when you need to. Something else you may want are little tie points. Normally around the midpoint area, maybe around your hips and around your shoulders. You may want to put a little loop here. And what these do, they allow you to basically tie a rope or a strap to one end of your quilt run it under your sleeping pad or under your body and then tie it to the other side of the quilt and what that does is keep the quilt under you it keeps the quilt from lifting up if you shift around and it keeps your sleeping pad under the quilt and i can't really show it well how exactly they work here but just kind of understand they are just two loops on the side of the quilt that are connected underneath you with a rope and that's almost all there is to say about quilts i'm sure i've left out some details if you have questions just let me know this video is running a little bit long but uh i'll go ahead and show you here this is my first hammock quilt that i made it's sitting on some mosquito netting i'm using for something else but you can see i used a taper here so you can see how the foot box down here is kind of narrower and tapered from the head box up here. And the head on this one is 48 inches wide, which is suitable for a hammock, but for ground sleeping, I found it to be a little too narrow. And again, this is a carol step design, and this is 12 inch squares, but in the middle of the squares are 6 inches of baffling. You can see here, there's the 12 inches. And right through here, that's the six inches of baffling. So this corner here, this is all open. Down can move all between these squares. And I I really like that design. I think it works much better than the typical horizontal baffles. And that's why I choose to do it. So that is quilt design. Once again, if you have questions, just let me know. And for the curious, I have actually finished my down jacket. It's not quite what I hoped it would be. There are some problems, but I'll go into more details on my... I'm going to make a video specifically for this jacket, so stay tuned for that. Anyways, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later.